Now, the chairperson of Parliament's Police Committee, Ian Cameron, says the police budget will be scrutinised in the coming days to see if more resources can be spared to beef up rural safety. This as five grade 12 learners were raped and a traditional leader, North Kunile Mtikhaha, murdered in the Mkagizweni village in the OR Tambo district in the Eastern Cape. Finance Minister Ino Korongwana delivered his mid-term budget speech yesterday, which received widespread mixed reaction. Police and Prisons Civil Rights Union spokesperson Richard Mamabolo joins us now to weigh in on the medium-term budget tabled by the minister as well as other safety issues within SAPS. Thank you so much, sir, for your time um, this afternoon and, of course, good afternoon to you. So just your reaction then to the mid-term budget speech that was made yesterday. Of course, we know that it was made in a backdrop of uh, many concerns in as far as budget cuts are, are concerned, but also at a time where, um, you know, especially for police, um, there are concerns of budget being cut in as far as the safety around police are concerned. Just just your touch on, on what you heard yesterday. Good afternoon to you and the viewers. Yes, indeed, we are quite concerned as a union because I think uh, for the longest of time we've been complaining about uh, the, well, the budget cuts and I think uh, uh, with is made instead of the nation address in the sixth administration, President Ramaphosa made it clear that uh, we need to have violent crimes by half within the next decade. Now, since then, there have been budget cuts and of course, even now, we are seeing that, uh, for example, uh, well, the SAPS budget has been cut by 9%. Uh, in the midst of uh, having challenges around uh, well, the, detail, the, the, the declining staff, but as well as noting the fact that uh, despite the fact that for the past two years there have been well, increases of uh, around uh, 10,000 on an annual basis of new recruits, uh, there have also been resignations uh, within the SAPS. So, so that is quite concerning and of course uh, with the growing population which currently stands at 62 million, we think that more resources need to be channeled to ensure that uh, we get more boots on the ground. Uh, and of course I think uh, the insignificant increase uh, within the DCS, which is about 2.1% uh, as well, will not really make uh, much changes because I think as a union we've been quite clear that uh, you know we need to ensure that uh, we deal away with uh, uh, overcrowding and understaffing. So we had expected that there would be more resources channeled to us ensuring that uh, we realize some of these goals because if we do not get rid of the challenge of crime in the country, uh, the likelihood of investments coming into the crown country uh, will definitely be limited. And one of the things we know, of course, is that, um, you know, your uh, central executive committee will be meeting some time to discuss the growing resource concerns uh, in the criminal justice cluster uh, specifically. Just talk to us about what are just some of the key points that will be discussed there, again, in the backdrop of this uh, midterm uh, budget policy statement we heard yesterday. Yeah, look, one of the key demands that our president Tularingwela has made uh, since being elected just last year in December was that uh, the priorities, of course, will be around ensuring that uh, we defend collective bargaining. And of course, that is the central theme around uh, our coming upcoming CEC in the next week. But as well as uh, looking into some of the variables, well, challenges around uh, the uneven allocation of resources, especially within the ACPS, of course, the uh, issues around the uh, traffic, nationalization of traffic, and of course, issues around the uh, ensuring that uh, the Department of Correctional Services becomes sustainable. Now, last year in October, we had what you call a policing in our way, and we brought in a number of experts to look into how we can work together as stakeholders in ensuring that uh, we commonly devise uh, means within which we can fight uh, well, uh, some of the challenges we are facing within the criminal justice cluster. And in the coming CEC, we will have a dedicated day where in there will be extensive discussions by pro professional people, experts around how we can actually work towards ensuring that uh, some of the decisions we took in the policing endeavor become realized. And hopefully uh, during that day, we'll obviously have uh, the new minister since we are now in the seventh administrations who will be part of the discussions to look into how we can actually play a meaningful role in ensuring that we work together uh, in ensuring that we improve the criminal justice cluster. Let's talk about police safety very briefly, uh, if you can. You know, we just saw that report of a trainee police officer 
who was um, still undertaking her training in Pretoria, and she was talking about how she was victimized because of her sexual orientation. We understand now an investigation has been launched after she was sexually harassed also by one of the officials at the academy. Just your comment around the safety of not only young recruits, but also, you know, police officers in general within the sector. Yeah, we do welcome the fact that in, an investigation is currently underway, uh, which was communicated by the, the National Commissioner. But as well, I think uh, uh, the issue around victimization is not uh, something which has, uh, which has only been reported now. We had, uh, I think, two or three incidents in the past year. And of course, we think that, uh, you know, uh, since then there has not been formal or clear accountability from the head of training, who, who's a woman again. We think that she needs to actually do more in ensuring that uh, training Trainees who go within uh, these training centers are protected. And of course, as a union, we're against any form of uh, discrimination. Uh, so we think that uh, these investigations should obviously conclude. But the, the head of uh, training should actually give a, a clear and more precise account around what have been the challenges, not only within that institution alone, but across uh, the country. Because we do not want a situation where in, uh, in the next year, new trainees go in there and have similar problems. So it's quite unfortunate. And of course, we're hoping that uh, the matter is resolved as soon as possible. Thank you so much, uh, Richard, for your time this afternoon. Richard Mamabolo there for us, a police and prisons, a civil rights uh, union spokesperson.